Good news, there's still time to vote for Ashley Johnson for the Sullivan Award. There's a brand new college water polo program coming to the state of Texas, and we revisit the ODP Girls National Championships, all coming up on a brand new counterattack. Hi everyone, Greg Meskel here. Thanks for joining us on The Counterattack, presented by The Rudy Project and XX2i. We start things off first with Team USA goalie Ashley Johnson, and yes, she is up for another award, this time a finalist for the AAU Sullivan Award. It recognizes the top amateur athlete in the United States. Voting closes tonight, so make sure you get over to aausullivan.org, cast your vote for Ashley Johnson, and make Team USA's goalie the Sullivan Award winner in 2017. And now we turn to men's water polo in the National League Finals coming up this April 1st and 2nd at the Woolet Aquatic Center in Irvine, California. If you can't join us at the pool, you can watch live every game. will be streamed at facebook.com slash USAWP. And the schedule is set for the final weekend. The Olympic Club enters the fray as the top seed overall, 6-0, through two weeks of play, they have the number one seed and will be looking for their first ever National League crown. Keep in mind, the New York Athletic Club won it back in 2016. So we look forward to seeing you at the pool in Irvine or joining us on the live stream coming April 1st and 2nd. And now we turn to college water polo. Last Friday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, an important holiday, no doubt. The day before was 316, and for pro wrestling fans, well, you know what Austin 316 means. Where's the connection? Well, it is fun to mention Stone Cold, but more importantly in the world of water polo, Austin College in Sherman, Texas, north of Dallas, is adding men's and women's water polo. It's going to start as a club team in 2017-2018 and then advance to varsity in 2018 through 2019. Why is this important? It's the first varsity water polo program in the state of Texas going back to the 1970s when Texas A&M had a team. Right now, the college is hiring for a head coach, so if you're interested, Get over and apply. In the meantime, we're excited to see Varsity Water Polo back in the state of Texas and hoping more programs will follow suit. With college water polo on our minds, we now go to UCLA this past weekend where the Cal Bears came down for a visit in an MPSF match televised on the Pac-12 network. And for the UCLA Bruins, before they get in the water at the Speaker Aquatic Center, they got to get to the pool. How do they do it? Like this, in a scooter mob. So with the scooters all parked and the athletes in the water, UCLA took control, winning this one 10-4. Rachel Fatal with four goals. Here are the highlights via Pac-12 Networks. And then afterwards, they caught up with Fatal on the big win. Thanks to the efforts of Madeline Tribuco in goal for Cal, gave way to an offensive explosion for UCLA. But coach, the Bears did a nice job keeping this one low scoring early. 1-0 Bruins after 1-3-2 at half. That was in large part to the Bear defense. Yeah, they really did. Without some of their best players, they did such a nice job of keeping it close. And, and Tribuco was great in the goal. And, but really, UCLA was just too much to handle. I mean, the, the talent they have, the depth they have, with a limited roster that Cal was bringing to the table today. It was almost just a matter of time before UCLA took over and players like Rachel Fatal, who who certainly stepped up her play in the second half and ended up scoring four goals. And we see the, the quick release there, one of the best shooters, not just in the country, but in the world, showing the touch there, really impressive. and. Just uh, a nice performance, especially in the second half by UCLA. Yeah, Bruins got it clicking late, started 0 for 5 on the 6 on 5, and then finished 3 for 8, and that told the story, along with Fatal and Cody Hill. Second half, all Bruins, they win it, a pivotal one over Cal, 10 to 4. What changed first half, second half? The offense seemed to click better in the second half. Yeah, I just think um, we got more comfortable and we set it, settled, settled into a better rhythm of the game in the second half. Um, I think our defense really drove our offense in the second half too, and I think that's what really opened it up for us. And now we go to our college scoreboard brought to you by Cap7. And just a day after USC established a new record for consecutive wins in women's college water polo at 47, beating Indiana, they almost had the streak stopped right then and there against Hawaii. They had to rally in the fourth quarter to beat the Rainbow Wahine 9-8. 48 wins now in a row for the USC women of Troy, defending NCAA champs. 
We'll look to keep it rolling later this week. Marist edging Cal State Northridge 11 to 10 in overtime. Another close one, Arizona State one goal better than Ashley Johnson and Princeton 7 to 6. And Whittier slips past George Washington 8 to 7. Water polo on TV alert two for the price of one, depending on your cable provider. Tomorrow night in Los Angeles, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, those same Princeton Tigers with Olympic champ Ashley Johnson visit number one in the land, USC. That's on Pac-12 Network. And then this Saturday, it's a Big Ten showdown in the CWPA, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, Indiana at Michigan. That's live on the Big Ten Network. And now we turn our attention back towards the ODP Girls National Championship. Last week on the show, we had highlights of all the gold medal matches. You can get to youtube.com slash USAWP. Watch all those gold medal highlights and the bronze medal highlights from both the girls and boys championships. In the meantime, let's look back at the girls event with this feature. At ODP, you're here playing with other people from around the nation who are just so excellent at water polo. And I think playing up at that higher level with so many other amazing athletes really pushes you to do better personally and as a team. My ODP experience is very fun. Um, it's fun to be around friends and, high, and have high competition. It's fun to like just like get to be yourself but at, play at the highest level. I come back to always improve. I mean, there's always stuff you can work on. And I mean, I have met a lot of friends, so it's fun to be able to hang around them. I think we'll take away a lot of skill that we can bring back to like our club and our high school and maybe some like training and conditioning. Um, I've really enjoyed it. It's a great opportunity to like play with people around the country and really improve my game, which I'm always trying to do. I think it's taught me that you can't give up and you always have to fight hard and that it's good to depend on your teammates and it's great being part of a team because you win together and you lose together and you're always there for each other. I'm really excited, this is my first time at ODP so it feels great. We learned how to work together. I mean, we only had three practices together so the fact that we were able to go undefeated was great. I would definitely encourage um, someone to do ODP. It's a great experience, whether you're new to the sport or you've played for a really long time. Um, there's nothing to be scared of and there's nothing to lose. And now we turn to our social media send-off, the way we close out every episode of The Counterattack. Don't forget to get involved. Use the hashtag counterattack, and we will share your tweet, your Instagram, your post right here on the show next week. We start things off first, coming from Canada. DDO Water Polo reaching out, giving props to the Quebec Provincial Gold Medal Squad at the 14U level. Congrats to DDO Water Polo. That coming from the Step Boomer Twitter account. From there, Flop Friday action, and perhaps our most important Flop Friday, as it was for a good cause, Swim Across America. This from the Triangle in North Carolina. Check out their Flop Friday action. Don't forget to submit your flops and use the hashtag Flop Friday. Down to Texas and beyond, Viper Pigeon competing in Barbados. Some good weather, some good times in the pool. Trivia crack, some of you might play this game. Sammy Hill chimed in with a water polo related question. And yes, the old horse joke, just when we think we're done with it, we are never done with it. It comes back. I think we all know the correct answer to this question. After that, Pamela Solano of ODP. This is the definition of Instagram straight flexing right here from Pamela. Nicely done. Olympian Merrill Moses on St. Patrick's Day repping the green with his daughter Adriana. And then last but not least, Tony Azevedo on Instagram throwing it back 15 years ago to a visit to Croatia. A lot of 2004 Olympians here in the mix. And a nice photo shared there from Tony and the rest of the squad. And that is the best of what we saw this week on the internet involving the sport of water polo. Don't forget to get involved. Use the hashtag counterattack. We'll share it right here. That's gonna do it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for joining us. We will catch you next time. And don't forget when you're on the counterattack, look weak side.